Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting witchy women and I'm going to be sipping on my ginger tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, chrome orange, purple violet, burnt umber, which I will call brown, deep yellow, green oxide, and Mars black. And of course, you can switch up those colors as well if you'd like to. For my tools today, I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six round synthetic brush and I have a number one round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same kind of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the first step is we're gonna be painting the sky. I'm gonna be using a large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are brown, purple, orange, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to have my sky dark at the top and lighter at the bottom left. This will be the lightest area of my sky. And it's gonna look like it's a sunsetty kind of mysterious type of sky. So that's why I'm gonna be using my purple and my brown in it. I'm gonna be going left to right and I'm gonna be bringing my sky about halfway down my canvas. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm loading my brush with a little bit of uh, purple and brown and I'm going to eyeball about halfway up or down my canvas. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a marker on the left side and then again on the right hand side. This just helps me to stop <laughs> painting when I get to that halfway point. And then I'm just gonna reload my brush with a little bit of brown and purple and I'm gonna be going left to right. I'm not gonna use a whole bunch of brown in my sky but I definitely wanna give it a nice warm you know, autumn kind of mysterious type of feel. Once I've got this on here, I'm gonna start picking up some orange and purple. And I will start introducing the white in a minute, but I wanna just kind of get the, um, the majority of the sky on here first before I start introducing the white. Cause I know that the white will really soften these colors and I and get them to be a little bit lighter. So I, I wanna kinda make sure that I have the vibrancy and the intensity the intensity up at the top before I start introducing that um, the white into the equation. So I'm just kinda going left to right. I'm gonna start introducing white right about now. So I picked up white with a little bit of orange on my brush. And the beautiful thing about this chrome orange is it, it has a lot of yellow in it so you could if you wanted to introduce yellow into your sky but because I'm using this shade of orange it helps to give me that real orangey type of or orangey yellowy type of feel to it and then I'm just gonna kind of go all the way down to the bottom here I think I might go a little purple and white over here on the left hand side to get this to go a little bit softer and you can have it as 
purpley as you want or as orangey as you want. It's going to be totally up to you, a visual preference on your part. I'm going to actually wipe my brush off on my paper towel because I really want this area to be pretty darn light down in the bottom left. So I wiped it off on my paper towel. I'm picking up some purple and white on my brush. Sometimes if you're using these multiple colors along the way, they might tend to get a little muddled if you have a lot of paint on your brush and you don't um, paint it, if, if it doesn't release quick enough for you when you wanna to go to these lighter areas. So if that happens, just don't feel like you have to muscle through it. Just wash and dry your brush and you can release those colors at your own desired amount. So I'm bringing it nice and light down here in the bottom left, making sure that it blends in with my sky over here on the bottom right. So just kind of blending those in together, making sure that they work well together. And then you can certainly kind of keep tweaking your sky as much as you want to. If you want to add more purple, go ahead. If you want to do a second layer to intensify those colors, feel free to do so. And then we will be using this same paintbrush for the next step. So once you've got your sky done, you can wash and dry this large paintbrush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint our path. I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are green, orange, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna give you the couple of markers, how far I want the, the, the end of the path to be and how wide I want the bottom of the path to be. But you can certainly make your path whatever way that you would like to. Um, I'm gonna start by just kind of making an outline of my path and then I'll color it in after that. So I'm going to make my outline with my path with a little bit of all three colors on my brush. So I'm gonna put a tiny bit of green, a tiny bit of orange, and a tiny bit of white on my brush. So this way as I'm doing the outline, I'll get various colors and that way I won't have um, a distinct outline when I go to paint it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a marker up at the top of my horizon line. So this is maybe about four and a half inches in or maybe about a quarter of the way in from the center. So if you center here, the edge is here, maybe about a quarter of the way in your canvas, you can just make yourself a little bit of a dot. Then on the bottom, I'm going to come in about two and a half to three inches. Just move my canvas like this so we can all see it a little bit better. So somewhere in through here is where I'm going to make this marker and I'll do the same thing on the right hand side. So the intention here is for my path to be really small as it goes far away and then it's going to kind of snake and get much larger um, at the bottom of my canvas. So how I'm going to start this is I'm going to go a little bit to the right, then I'm going to go to the left, very close to the edge of my canvas, and then I'm going to wrap it back around like this and then come and meet in through here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start my little path going to the right just a little bit, then I swish it immediately over to the left, and when I come over to the left, I'm going to go pretty darn far over towards the edge of my canvas, somewhere about here. This is going to be about, I would say, almost a, a third of the way from the top to the bottom of your canvas before you kind of start swishing it around like this. And when I come over in this direction, I'm going to go past my um, top part of my, of my path. So I'm going to go over to the right farther than here, maybe by about an inch or so, and then I'll turn it and it's gonna come right back into this area in through here. And then I'm just gonna reload my brush with those three colors, orange, green, and a little bit of white. And when I go to do this one, it's gonna be very narrow up here. It's gonna swish down here, and then it's gonna come way over and swish right into this marker in through here, maybe come out a little bit further than that. So I really don't have to redo this part here because that's already nice and slender for me. So I'm just gonna kind of bring it down in through here. And then right about here is where I'm gonna start to make it a little bit wider. I'm gonna turn the corner in through here and then I'm gonna make this even wider and wider as it comes down in through this vicinity, in through here, and then as I come around this corner, I will just kind of wrap it around something like this and meet my marker in through there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna alternate colors, 
orange, green, and white. So I'm gonna start with some orange and I'm just gonna put a whole bunch of spots of orange. I did not wash my brush. I'm just marking um, these various areas with the orange paint and I'm going in the direction that I feel the path is traveling. So I've got some, some orange up and through here. And if you make marks within the exterior areas, don't worry about that because we're gonna be doing a whole bunch of other um, detailed information that will provide you opportunity to cover those up. Now, without washing my brush, I'm just picking up some green paint and I'm gonna add some green markers in through here. And you can get yours to be as you know dark or as light as you'd like. I'm getting mine to be a little bit on the lighter side, which will come when I put the white on there, simply because I want my, my witches to kind of have um, stand out a bit so I'm gonna make sure that I get this nice and, and light. So right now I'm picking up some white paint and I'm gonna utilize the white to kind of blend these colors in with one another. So you might find that you want this to be a nice soft, almost solid type of color, but I am just kind of getting mine to be have these various tones in it. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more orange in a minute, but right now, just kind of getting these colors on here. You might find that you wanna use more of like a dry brush kind of technique. It's gonna be a visual preference, uh, whatever you want. I just added a little bit more orange so I could get it a bit darker. And you can, of course, adjust yours whatever intensity that you want. Just make sure that you have a good coverage throughout that ground and then when you're when you feel like you've got it covered and it's in a nice way that is pleasing to your painterly eye you we are going to be utilizing the same uh brush for the next step so once you've got this done i keep adding orange i feel like i want more orange in mine um, but once you've got your path nice and created you can just wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the ground or the grassy area. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, green, orange, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna work from the dark to the light. I'm going to have darkness around the edges of my path. I'm gonna have darkness down at the bottom. And then I'm gonna work my way towards the light, which to me, the lightest area of the canvas would be over here. So we'll have some foliage and stuff that has a little bit of highlight in through there. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna put what I'll call like a shadow on the edge of my pathway. I'm gonna use my large brush. I'm gonna put a little bit of black paint and a touch of green on my brush at the same time. And I'm really just gonna give this soft, kind of outline along the edge of my pathway. I don't need it to be a really firm edge, but I do want it to look like it is, in fact, touching that pathway. So this way, when I go to put information along the edge of the path, I won't have to worry about there being unpainted areas. And I don't want it to be a solid type of line, so this way it'll look a little bit more natural. So I'm just kind of using the black and green to get myself a little bit of a darker area right along the edge of that pathway. As you get towards the um, smaller areas, what you can do if you're using a similar brush to me, is I like to take my brush and kind of squish it in my paint on the side of my palette. That's gonna give me, it'll, it'll make my bristles in control. It'll kind of squish them together. So that way I can just kind of use the corner of my brush because I know that this is a smaller area up in through here. So just kind of using a little bit of the corner of my brush just to get a little bit of darkness by the edge of this pathway. And then I've got that area down over on the right hand side. So just a tiny bit of, a, of darkness in through here. And then over on this right hand side, I think I'm gonna pull this in just a little bit. So I'm gonna have a big tree in through here. So just wanna make sure I've got enough room for that. So this is a great time if you wanted to adjust your, um, your path in any way, feel free to do so. And then once I've got that exterior type of edge going, I'm gonna bring some foliage um, 
laying over the edge of my pathway. So I'm still going to use just a little bit of black and green on my brush. And this is really going to be more or less the area down at the bottom of the path, maybe a little bit coming up in through here, but I've got my green and my black on my brush. And I'm just going to kind of dot it crossing over into my pathway just a little bit. This is going to add that illusion of this foliage just kind of creeping over the edges. It's going to allow the viewer to understand that maybe this area down here is closer to us. So we're seeing some of this, you know, exciting energy and information within the pathway. So I'm just kind of dotting it over the edge a little bit into that pathway. I'm not going to do too much on this side because to me, the foliage would be standing up and it wouldn't, I wouldn't have too much laying over the side, but if you want to put some there, you certainly can. And then maybe I'll put a little bit on this edge in through here, just kind of poking up in front of the path a little bit and that helps to give you that dimensional element. So now that I've got that taken care of, now I'm just going to fill in the rest. So I probably am not going to pick up black again because I want this to get lighter and lighter as it moves up my canvas. So I just am going to release some of that black right now by just adding these dots into the ground area. And then I'm going to alternate green and orange for a while. So I just picked up orange without washing my brush to get some of this in through here. And you can use a lot of paint, you can use a little bit of paint. When I'm doing this type of um, thought process, utilizing multiple colors and trying to get multiple tones and stuff like that, I don't tend to use a, a ton of paint on my brush because I want to be able to switch colors on the fly. Like right now I want to pick up some green and I don't want it to necessarily all blend into one color. So I'm just kind of reserving or kind of being cautious about the quantity of paint that I'm using on my brush and making sure that when I dot it, I don't necessarily over dot it, making it all one solid color. But you could certainly have yours, you know, as solid of a color as you want, but I'm going to also try and get rid of uh, the outline type of look along the edge where we put that black, um, the black shadow around the path. So I'm just kind of consciously going right towards that shadowy area and making sure that I've got it disguised enough so it doesn't just look like a solid line. And again, if you felt like you wanted to go darker in areas, I just picked up a little bit of black because I feel like I still want this pretty dark down here, but I had released almost too much of my darkness from my brush, so I just picked up a little bit more. And then I'm just gonna kind of creep my way up towards that horizon line. And again, I'm just alternating right now my orange and um, green with the remnants of black on my brush. And if you feel like you have to pick up any more black just to get it to look like it, it belongs together, feel free to do so. But as I get towards the edges here, I'll probably utilize more of the corner of my brush along the, um, the edges of the pathway. I'm just kind of finishing up over here. I'm keeping this right hand side pretty darn dark because uh, the, again, the light for me is gonna be over on the left hand side, but you could certainly make yours lighter if you wanted to or darker or introduce a different color if you wanted to. It's gonna be a personal preference. You could certainly utilize brown if you wanted to, but the orange and green together are going to make a natural looking brown as well. So you can certainly have fun with that all you want. I am going to bring some of this up into the sky. So it's going to look like we've got some extra bits of foliage just off in the distance. And I'm just gonna make sure that I've got enough information in through here, bringing it right to my skyline. And then you can just kind of keep adding those colors to fill in your little, your little dots or gaps if you have to. And then as I get towards this left-hand side, oh, I had a little bit of black on my brush there. That's okay. As I get towards this left-hand side, I'm gonna do the same thing up in through um, here with bringing a little bit of this 
these colors up over into this left hand side like there's some some foliage up in through here now I'm going to start picking up yellow on my brush without washing my brush this is going to get start to give me this lightness that I want over here um, as it's going towards the lightest area of the landscape or the pathway wherever that may magically be going so just picking up a little bit of yellow on my brush maybe a touch more green in this area over here and then once I have it all in place then I'm going to start adding a touch of white to my brush to get these little bits of highlight so I got it all in place where I want it to be now without washing my brush I'm really just going to pick up a teeny tiny bit of white paint on the edge of my brush and this is going to add these little bits of highlights along the edges of this foliage in through here. So you can kind of keep utilizing it with your dirty brush and then picking up a little bit more just to kind of give that information that this is in fact the, the brightest part of your pathway that is just kind of calling these beautiful witches down down the path to make sure that they are being guided in the in the correct direction and you can get it to be as bright as you want or as soft as you want this is going to be a preference on your part you can have more orange you can have more yellow you can have more green whatever is visually appealing to you and then once you feel like you've got it all nice and situated and you're enjoying the look of it we are going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step so you can put this large brush wherever you'd like to and you can take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some trees. I'm gonna be using my medium brush the dominant color I'm going to be using is black, but I'll come back and add little highlights of with maybe some purple and white or brown and white or whatever color I choose, I'll let you know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with just black paint on my medium brush. I'm going to have a really big tree on this side and it's going to be really wide at the bottom and then it's just going to have a whole bunch of branches maybe that are leaning over. Um, the pathway and then I'll have a skinny one coming up on this side. So I'm going to start with this one over on the right hand side. I'm going to have um, a really wide trunk in through here like it's maybe a, an old maple tree or something. At the bottom of my tree I'm going to um, kind of skirt out little roots that are uh, growing into into the ground and then I'm just going to kind of get it to be nice and solid as it as it grows up the tree. If you run into wet paint, as I am doing, don't worry about it. The black is going to overpower and you can um, just paint right through it. Black is wonderful for that, <laughs> especially when you're doing um, kind of trees and stuff like that. It's only going to enhance the, um, the natural look to it. So as I do my trees, I like to start with the trunk and then build into the main branches, which are going to be the really solid um, foundation for the tree so uh, that's kind of where I usually will start and then I will make my little branches coming off of that so I am going to have these going all the way up to the top of my canvas and going off of my canvas but I'm going to make sure that I have some really thick ones to start and then once I've got those in place I'll I will branch off into other tr in, into other branches but as I'm doing these initial ones, I am kind of cautious and mindful that I want it to look nice and natural. So I definitely will make almost like wiggly type of branches so that it looks like they are natural and that they've got some bark to them and maybe they've got some some broken branches to them and things of that nature so I like to kind of add a lot of movement into my trees and a lot of information and a lot of you know different types of branches that are coming off in different directions but all branches will start thick um, at the base of the tree and then work their way into thinner branches as they move away from the um, from that center trunk of the tree. So that's just typically how I will approach these. I know that I want my witches to be in this vicinity and they're going to come up about this tall, their heads. So I want to just make sure that I'm not going to 
take away from the look of my witches as well. So I'm kind of staying away from that area. And as I go into my skinnier branches, I know that I want maybe a couple kind of coming down in through here. And as I do my skinnier branches, I lift off on the pressure of my brush, which will allow me to get these pointy little edges to it. And the more branches you have, the more natural it's gonna look. And if you wanna give it a little spooky look to it, just kind of make them um, look like they're bent and they're, they're broken and they've got all kinds of information in them that will allude to them being in a, a spooky enchanted forest. So once I've got my main ones, I'm really just gonna be carefree with the rest of the branches, just kind of with a skinny touch. You can water down your, your, um, your paint a little bit. That will allow you to have even skinnier branches. They can come off in different directions. So just know that you know your branches don't all have to look the same. They can really take on their own unique kind of look to them. And the more that you have, the, the fuller this tree is going to look, even though we're not putting leaves on it just make it putting lots of branches is going to make it look nice and nice and natural so once you feel that you've got enough on this particular tree you can go ahead and move to your other tree and just make sure that your trunk is wide enough to support all of the the branches up top so if you get done and you're like hmm that doesn't look like it looks like my tree will fall over then just make that trunk a little bit wider and i'm going again for a, a nice kind of big, wise, older kind of tree. So I'm having a nice wide base to mine. And then this one over here, I'm just gonna have a tall slender, slender tree. So I'm gonna have this one kind of starting down here all the way at the bottom of my canvas. So it'll look like this one is closer to us. And then I'm gonna have this one kind of crossing over the path and then just being really tall and skinny as it goes up my canvas. So I'm just gonna kind of go in through here, maybe kind of cross over my path a little bit. And because I'm crossing it over the path, it is, again, adding that, a, a simple way to add dimension to the painting. So this is one of those, one of those tricks that if you want to tell the viewer that they're, you know, they're kind of following this path and this is where it starts and that's where it goes. If you put these objects along the way in, on, in a natural position, they, that will that will help the viewer understand the the pathway the natural pathway to to the painting and it'll just guide them right through in the way that in the way that you want them to and again I'm gonna have my um, my witch somewhere in through here and she's gonna be holding a call some kind of fiery cauldron of sorts so I don't want to take away from that so I just am mindful about not bringing this tree too far over in front of that path. And then of course you can have as many branches as you want to and you can have this as wickedly wild as you want it to be. And then when you feel like you've got enough branches and you've got it filled up enough, we are going to be utilizing our, we're gonna utilize this same brush for the next step. So you can just kind of um, you, you can just wash and dry this small brush. I'm thinking, think, I'm thinking like this seems to be good to me. So I'm going to just wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so I guess I got really excited about painting branches last <laughs> because I, I totally forgot to tell you how to do the highlights on the trees. So we're gonna do the highlights on the trees now. I'll be using my medium brush. I'm gonna be using white and purple, and if I, I might use a little bit of brown too, but I'm gonna just start with a little bit of white and purple. I know that my light source is gonna be over in through this area so when I do these highlights I'm not going to be doing a, a lot I'm just going to be adding the illusion of part of the tree being illuminated by that light source and it will also give the opportunity to give a little bit of form to the tree as well so I still have some wet black paint on my tree so you may as well and that's only going to make your process a little bit easier but if you if you need to add black or any other colors feel free to do so so what I'm gonna first do is I'm putting a tiny bit of white paint and a tiny bit of purple paint on my brush. Not a lot. This is just going to, again, allow me to have um, a little bit more information in my trees. 
So when I'm doing this, I'm going to be concentrating on this left hand side is going to have the most or the majority of the highlight as well as any left hand side of any of these areas of the tree that I want. So if I want this um, branch or part of the tree to look like it is illuminated, I can just add a little bit of a highlight on that left hand side. If I want some of these roots to look like they are illuminated, I can just add a bit of lightness on one side of them and that's going to make them look like they're three dimensional. If you felt like you needed to add a bit of um, black or you feel like you've gone too far, just pick up a little bit of black on your brush and you can always just add the, the darkness back in. So don't feel like if you're going through this process, it, if you bring in too much lightness that you can't reverse it. Black is a very easy color to, to bring back. So I just reloaded my brush with a little bit of white and purple. And as I get up into these branches up top, I'm not going to do much. I'm really just going to pick a couple of branches that I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight to. I, the dominant area that I added the highlight is on that trunk because that's what to me is going to lead the viewer's eye or catch the viewer's eye the most. So I'm going to put a little bit you know, make that as bright as I want it on that left hand side. And then as I go up these branches, I'm just going to kind of pick a couple of them and just add these little bits of, of highlights on them. So just a tiny bit of the white and the purple on my brush. And it, I'm just going to illuminate a couple of these branches coming up in through here. And again, you can, you can have them as dominant as you want or as subtle as you want. And if you ever feel like you went too far, you can certainly just bring back some of the black. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to my little tree over here. So just kind of reloading my brush with white and a touch of purple. And I'm going to do it. this tree, the light or the light source is on the right hand side. So that's the side that I'm going to put my highlight. And of course, you can make yours as vibrant as you want or as subtle as you want. Totally up to you. I'm going to put a couple down some of these branches. And if you make some new branches along the way, that just roll with it. Just have fun with it and give yourself as many, as much information in your tree as you want. I'm going to put a little bit of highlight down this trunk in through here. So I just picked up a bit more purple on my brush to give myself a little bit of a highlight over here on the right hand side. And again, if you feel like you went too light, just pick up a touch of that black to get it to, to blend in. And then you can keep tweaking this as much as you want to. And we will be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your highlights on your trees, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the silhouettes of our witches. I'm gonna be using my medium brush, but as you go through this process, you might find that you wanna use a combination of your medium and your small brush, but I'm gonna start with my medium brush. I'm gonna be using just black paint. I'm gonna give you some strategic markers and guide you through some basic shapes that we can um, do to create these beautiful wicked witches. So I'm gonna be using um, my medium brush. I'm gonna load it with black paint, but I am going to water down my black paint a little bit. So I'm adding a couple of drops of water into it so that way it's nice and thin and kind of like an ink consistency which will allow me to get um, slender lines with my brush and then I take it and I spin it in the paint on the side of my palette and that also will make my brush nice and pointy so once I've got that done I'm going to decide where I want the tops of my um, which is to go so this will be the top of their head not necessarily the tip of their hat but the the top of their head so I want them to look like they're tra th that there's some perspective. So one's going to be smaller and they're going to get bigger. I'm going to have three. I'm going to have my first one, which will be the smallest one, a little bit to the right of my pathway. So maybe about an inch, inch and a half to the right. And I'm going to go up from my horizon line, maybe about two to three inches. That's where I'm going to have the tip of that one. I'm going to go to the right from that about three inches. And then I'm going to go to the right of that about three, three and a half inches. So that's going to be the tippy top of each one of my witches. Then I'm going to make a vertical line for each 
um, this is going to, in essence, be just the, the base for their body. And for this first one, I'm going to bring this, I would say, about halfway between this path. So I'm just going to create a vertical line straight down and stop about halfway into the pathway. The next one I'm going to have coming straight down, and I'm going to end it about midway in this curve. So I'm going to just take this, and I'm going to go straight down and end it about midway through this curve. And then this last one, I'm going to come almost all the way down to the bottom of my canvas, maybe stopping about an inch, bef uh, an inch away from the edge of my canvas or the bottom of my canvas. And if you wobble like I just did, no worries. We're gonna have a, 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 a nice witch on top of that, so no big deal. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down each of these lines, almost about halfway down the line, and we're gonna make a marker for the waist. So if I come about halfway uh, down this one, it'll drop it a little bit below my horizon line. I'm gonna give this a waist that's gonna be about a quarter of an inch to half of an inch wide. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. This one's going to be a little bit wider than the first one. So maybe this is a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch wide. And then on this one in through here, this one will be about an inch wide. So this is going to be the width of the waist for all three of them. So now I just need to just need to paint some shapes on here. <laughs> so when I do um, female figures, I tend to think of the, the main shape of the body as like an hourglass or uh, a, a shape that is wider at the shoulders comes in at the waist and then bumps out for the um, for the hips so I'm going to come about half the distance between my waist and the top of my line this is going to be where I'm going to put my shoulders my shoulders are going to be a little bit wider than that waist so I bring it out just a little bit and then I'm going to bring it in to the edge of that waist so a little bit wider than the waist and then just bring it in. You can color it in. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the bottom part of the, of the girl on here. So this one I want to look like she's kind of um, stepping. So I'm going to put this left leg is gonna kind of come out a bit. This is gonna be like where her knee is and it's gonna just kind of trail down in through here. This is where um, you'd think of like the feet to be. On the right hand side, I'm gonna give her a little bump for her rear end or her hip in through here. It's gonna come down a little bit like this and then she's gonna have her skirt is gonna start flowing. But I, I'm cautious about bringing the skirt too far over to the right because I know I'm gonna have this girl in through here. So as I do this skirt, it's gonna start coming down my pathway like this and I'm just kind of rippling it ar along the edges, but I'm not gonna bring it too far because I, I wanna, again, make sure that I am cautious about that girl next to her. And then I'm just gonna paint this in with black and then I gotta give her a head and a hat and some arms. But what I'm gonna do first, so we don't get too confused, is we're gonna do the same process to these two. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna come about halfway between the waist and the top. This is gonna be where my shoulders are, so somewhere in this vicinity. Gonna bring it out a little bit wider than my waist, bring it down, bring it out a little bit wider than my waist, bring it down, color this part in, then I'm gonna put her at the bottom part of her skirt. So this one we're seeing mostly just from the back. So I'm gonna kind of give her her um, her hips in through here. So hips in through here and her feet are gonna be somewhere down in through here. So this is gonna be the long part of her skirt somewhere in through here. And of course you can have your movement of your dress much different than mine. It does not have to be exactly the same as mine. And then I'm gonna have this one again kind of going down my pathway. So I'm gonna bring this out, I would say somewhere in through here and maybe ripple down something like that. And then this side is gonna come over like this and then just ripple down my path somewhere in through there. And I'm just gonna color this in with black. And then I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other uh, witch. So about halfway between the waist and the top is where those shoulders are gonna be. So somewhere in through here, bring it out a little bit further than that waist for the shoulder, bring it down to the waist, do the same thing on the right hand side, 
bring it down to that waist, color this part in, and you can see it's a pretty systematic process that I have for this uh, for these particular shapes. And then this one, this skirt is going to kind of come out and meet the bottom of my canvas. So I'm going to take this uh, left hand side. This is going to be where her hip and her uh, leg is going to be. It's going to come somewhere in through here and then we'll just kind of get this to ripple out down and through there. And then same thing with here. This is going to be her hip and um, rear end kind of area. Bring this down in through about here and then I'll just ripple this out and get this to be really big and flowing and cascading off the bottom of the canvas. And then I'm just going to paint it in with black. And then we got to put some some heads on and some hats. Those are going to be fun because you can certainly, you know, adjust this to be whatever type of, you know, type type of hat that you want or dress that you want. You can certainly customize the colors and all kinds of good stuff. So for the heads, they're going to have long hair on them in a minute. Um, but what I first want to do is just give them a shape. So when I put my hat on I will have I'll be able to make my hat wide enough for for the heads so I'm just going to kind of give myself a little bit of an oval type of shape for the head give myself a little bit of a neck because you also might want to make yours with short hair you might not want to make yours you know have as long of hair as I do it's going to be totally up to you and then I'm going to go ahead and put a hat on. And I like to, to do that shape just to tell me that I've got um, my hat wide enough or thin enough. So once I've got that in place, I can just kind of make myself whatever type of hat that I, I want. I'm going to have this one kind of cascading back in this direction and then maybe I'll have this one kind of pointy up here and now I can see how how wide I need it to be along the edge of the the head so I can make sure that I've got it wide enough and of course you can make yours as as fun as you want and then I'm going to give her some hair so I'm just going to kind of use the tip of my brush to kind of give her some pieces of hair going out over this right hand shoulder and through here. And again, you can have yours as much or as little as you want. That's gonna to be totally up to you. I'm gonna give her a couple little pieces on this left hand side. You may not wanna put any on the left hand side. You may wanna put a lot, totally up to you. And again, if you wanted to switch to your smaller brush to do those kind of things, feel free to do so. We'll do the arms in a minute, but right now I just kinda of wanna do the heads and um, the hats. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a little bit of an oval shape up in through here to make sure that I have a good enough shape on that head for my hat to sit, so something like that. Give myself a little bit of a neck in a minute here, just again, in case you want to make yours a little bit different than mine, feel free to do so. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make this hat about halfway up that head, and I'm gonna give a little point over there and this one's going to maybe cascade down in through here and have a little bit of a of a little pop up over there and then I can go ahead and do whatever kind of shape hat that I want so I'm going to have mine uh, a little bit on the pointy side in through here and maybe rippling down the head there and then maybe I've got it coming back in this direction over here Maybe this one goes out a little bit further and we'll have this one kind of come in like this and just kind of, again, you can have your, your shapes of your hats, whatever way you'd like. I'm going to give some hair now. So this hair is going to really come cascading far. I think I'm going to have this one almost down to her waist. She's going to have really fun, long hair in through here. And again, yours can be curly hair. It can be straight hair. I'm going to have this one actually having a lot of hair over this side too. And this is a great way, like if you're doing the heads and you're like, oh, that's, you know, too big or too small, just disguise it with a lot of hair. No, <laughs> you know, hair can take up a lot of room in the painting. So you can really make it whatever way you want. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this last head. So again, 
putting this in this vicinity, giving myself the shape so I know how wide I want that hat to be. And of course, you can make yours as big or as small. And of course, these heads are getting larger as we're coming towards the, um, the bottom of the canvas. Oh, I just put my hand through a little bit of wet paint there. Just fixing that a little bit. And then once I've got this head in place, this is gonna be a bigger hat. So I'm gonna have this one maybe coming out. This one's gonna go pretty darn far. I'm gonna have this one maybe coming out to about here. And then it's gonna ripple down in through here and maybe come down this. Maybe this one's leaning down a little bit. And then I'm gonna have this top of the hat coming We'll put this maybe somewhere in through this direction and have this one a little bit taller than that one over there and just kind of rippling the side so it looks like it's got some some you know cloth or movement to it and then just kind of bringing this down in through here making sure that it's as wide as the head needs to be and then i can go ahead and put a whole bunch of hair in through here i'm going to have hair coming out this side as well so just kind of lots of hair just flicking out the sides. Maybe you have a couple of little peekaboo spots where you can see the background behind those. I'm gonna have this hair cascading again, maybe down towards that waist area. And again, if you wanted littler pieces of hair, you could certainly utilize a smaller brush to accomplish that. That's gonna be um, something that you can decide all on your own. And then I just need my hands and my arms. I think I am gonna switch to my smaller brush for the arms, I just wanna make sure that I can get them slender enough. So I just switched brushes to my small brush. So I'm gonna have this girl here, she's gonna be holding like a cauldron of sorts. So I'm gonna have her arm is gonna come from the shoulder in through here. I'm gonna have it kind of coming down in an angular type way. Most people's um, elbows will be about the same um, distance to their waist. So I wanna make sure when I'm doing these that if, if she was to lay her arm down, her elbow would meet about her waist. So that's a good kind of gauge as you're going through these to make sure that you've got it kind of proportionately set. And then I'm gonna just have this arm kind of going out in a um, kind of a little diagonal type of way. She's gonna have her hand is just wrapped around the edge of the, of the light source. I just wanna make sure that I put this in the area that I want. So I'm gonna have this kind of just a long, narrow type of stick that's gonna be holding the fire that she's carrying. So I just wanted to make sure that I put that in the area that I want. She's got a little, just a little hand holding on in through here. So I'm not really doing any real detail to that. And I'm gonna have her having a little witch's um, dress with some stringy kind of things coming down from the, the bottom part of her sleeve so this is a fun thing that you can add as well so just have fun with those kind of details i'm going to bring the cauldron all the way up um, at about mid height is the height of the base of it so i'm just using a loose sketcherly type of brush stroke for this i'm going to do a uh, almost like a horseshoe for the uh, for the head part of it and that's all i'm really going to do for that part right now, we'll add details to it in a little bit with the with the light and stuff, but that's what I'm gonna do for her right now. I'm gonna go ahead and move to the other one. This other one is gonna be carrying, I'm gonna call it a, a witch's potion or a magic potion kind of, kind of thing. So I'm gonna have her elbow um, or her arm is gonna kind of be down in this direction. I wanna be able to see the, um, the little container, so I want that to, be um, in this vicinity in through here. So we're gonna bring her arm a little bit more in, in an upward direction. And of course, again, you can really have fun with these as, as much as you want. You can have um, them carrying whatever you'd like to. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna put the, the cauldron of sorts on right now so I can um, put her hand or the handle in the right place. So I'm just doing this like long, big kind of like teardrop type of shape, but this is your magic potion. You can have it in whatever type of shape that you want or whatever type of container that you want. I'm gonna do a couple of 
pretty um, like little design elements. We'll put some some color in there in a little bit, but this is you know something that you can certainly decorate and uh, and imagine to be whatever way that you would like. And then I got to put a handle so she we make sure that she can she can carry this. So if her hand is maybe we'll put her little hand right in through here, and then we'll put a little handle coming out in this direction, and then maybe coming down in that direction. That's looking pretty good to me, something like that. And then she's gonna have some of those fun, wispy things coming off of her her dress as well at that elbow, so just making these cute little stringy, um, little tassel-y things along the side. And then I've got this last this last lady over here, she's gonna be carrying like a walking stick or something. So I'm gonna have her arm almost coming straight down in through here. And again, her elbow is gonna be near her waist somewhere in this vicinity. And she's gonna just have hers, her arm like this. So the forearm part can be uh, of different lengths depending on the angle that you're seeing it at. I think this one needs to be a little wider, so we gave her a bigger bicep. Um, so don't feel like your forearm has to be super long because if, if it's kind of turned in a different direction, you may see it in a different way. You might see it in a different length than you would think it would naturally be. So just know that those forearms can be of different length depending on the angle that we're seeing them at. And I'm just gonna give her a, um, a long kind of crooked walking stick kind of thing, something like this. I think I'm gonna move her hand out a bit more. And I'm just having this one kind of coming down. I'm gonna be a little wider in through there and then just kind of coming down in between them. And it's gonna be just a little like rickety old piece of wood or something. And then we are going to be utilizing this same brush, the small brush for the next step. So once you've got your silhouettes of your witches, you can wash and dry. Oh, let me give her some tassels on her elbow too. You can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are going to finish our staff and our fire. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are orange, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna first add the glow from the fire to the background. So I just put yellow on my brush and you can put a good amount of yellow. You do wanna make sure that your black is dry. Um, so this way you don't smear it. And I'm going right over the black and I'm going to rub this out into the sky. It can come out nearing your witch if you felt that it wasn't blending out enough, you could certainly add a touch of water to your brush and that will allow it to be on the thinner side and you can pull it out even further. I'm gonna have this going up just a little bit more because I want this to be really looking like it's illuminating this forest walkway for them. And you can bring it, like I said, you can bring it out as far as you want to, but I definitely want mine to be pretty darn high. And my yellow is translucent or transparent where you can see through it. So this is what's allowing me to give it this glow type of, of effect. But if your yellow is not translucent, then you can just add a little bit of water or liquid medium or something into your um, paint or on your brush to allow it to kind of sp be that um, translucent type of look. And you can bring it in front or behind your trees, however far you want is totally fine. And then once you've got it all dispersed as far as you want, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up some orange paint and I am painting uh, a highlight of sorts on my staff. So I'm just gonna kind of bring it along the black. The bl my orange is also see-through. So this is going to allow me to see the black underneath it. So you can certainly um, make it as far out as you want to. It's I'm just utilizing it as a nice complementary color to give myself some more information on this staff. And if you felt you wanted to bring back some black or put some more um, details with your black on, you can certainly go ahead and do that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to 
uh, wash and dry my brush. Just bringing some of this orange up and through here. Wash and dry my brush. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow and white. So this is going to be um, part of my flame making, but I have yellow and white on my brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of designate myself this light area in, in the center here. I'm not pushing hard and I'm not using a ton of paint. I really just kind of wanna um, create these lighter type of streaks throughout this area and kind of give myself a progression of the darker yellow going into what's going to be the lightest, um, brightest area in the center. So just a little bit of yellow and white. You can put a couple of sparks kind of going up into the sky and then just kind of allowing for these this lighter area to be making its way to the center of that um, of that staff. So once you've got these on here, what you do is just wipe your brush off, pick up a little bit of just white, and you're gonna give that center that really bright area. So with the progression of the, the brightness in the center kind of dissipating and making its way to the outside edges, that's what's gonna make it look like it's glowing. And if you feel like you went too bright in the center, you can certainly back it off with a little bit of yellow um, and just make it into whatever kind of intensity that you would like. And then we are going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your fire done, you can put the small brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our witches. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are purple, green, orange, white, and if I need to, some black too. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna have each witch as their own individual color, but you could certainly switch up the colors if you'd like to. I'm gonna have this one purple, this one's gonna be green, this little potion is also gonna be purple, so I'll do that while I'm doing the purple one, and then this, little lady is gonna be orange. And of course you can switch up the colors if you'd like to. So I'm gonna start with the purple one and I'm gonna put purple with a touch of white on my brush. You don't need a lot of the white. Um, it will overpower and it will be very prominent so you don't need much at all. And what I'm gonna do when I have this combination of paint on my brush is I'm going to make um, my first marks are going to be where I want my paint to be the brightest, which is the highlighted areas. Those areas are going to be facing my light source, which is this fire and this um, lighted part of the pathway. So I have purple and white on my brush. I know that I'm going to want a good highlight on the edge of my hat in through here, making my little, my little rim. I'm going to have some lightness over on the left edge over here, and then I can just kind of pull this back a little bit to give myself a little bit of shape to it. I definitely want some on the edges of the hair. I'm gonna put more purple in a minute, but right now I'm just kind of getting my, my biggest highlights in place. I want some on this shoulder, which is definitely going to allude to the light being over on the left-hand side. I definitely want some on the edge of this little um, piece of wood she's carrying on her hand, on her arm, maybe a little bit on her waist in through here, definitely on a couple of these little pieces of fringes. I'm reloading my brush to uh, put my brush more con in control, so I need my point of my brush to be back in place. So anytime you feel like your your brush is out of control, reloading and repointing your brush will, will help you with that. I'm going to bring this down a little bit down this rickety kind of staff in through here, bringing it over on this left hand side of the body in through here. And then what I'm going to do is now that I've got that in place, I'm not going to wash my brush, just kind of wipe it off on my paper towel and pick up more purple. And the purple is going to work its way into the dark side of the of the girl. So the dark side is going to be the right side. I do want some of this hair to be representational on top of her back. So I'm adding a little bit of this more purpley color on top of there. I'm going to definitely make sure that I have the shape of her body 
um, in, included in, in my process. So just making sure I've got a little bit more lightness in through there. I'm going to put a little bit more purple on my brush. I might lighten this up a little bit more in a minute, but right now just kind of working my way into where I want these lighter areas to be. I'm going to bring some of this purple down into her skirt down in through here. So as it's in this darkness, you don't really have to do a whole heck of a lot to it. If you wanted it to be brighter or have the purple more evident, just put a little bit more purple and white on your brush and that's going to elevate that, that lightness of it and you can certainly, that will make that color stand out a little bit more, but that's gonna be a personal preference on your part. Um, and if you're working on wet black, you might have to wait a minute until that black dries a little bit so you can work um, more of the purpley color in there as opposed to like a grayish type of color. So if you want that butt to pop out a little bit more, put a little bit more lightness on it. And if you feel like you went too, too much in any, in any area, just wait a minute, let it dry, and then you can bring back some of the black. You don't have to feel like if if you went too light that oh my god it's you know the end of the world because you can always just bring back some of that black and while i have the purple on my brush i am going to make sure that i have enough purple represented over on this little piece of wood in through here and then i definitely want to put some in the hair and the hat and on this magic potion over here so i'm just I've got a little bit of purple and white on my brush right now, so I'm just gonna kind of put it in this magic potion kind of thing. Maybe I'll put a little bit of the, the purple glowing out the sides as if this is a glowing kind of object. Pick up a little bit of white and maybe we'll put a couple of little highlights in through here. Maybe there's a little glow in the center of here. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's a love potion or a, or a wicked witch you know, I don't know, whatever, whatever they, they do to, to people in good ways or in bad ways. Maybe this is the secret right here in this little magical container. And then you can, of course, modify and make any little adjustments that you want. And then I'm going to go ahead and move on to my next witch. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and my next one's going to be green. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to uh, load my brush with green and a teeny tiny bit of white paint. So I have mostly green with a little bit of white paint. I'm gonna start in the areas that I feel would be the brightest. So I've got a little bit in through here. I've got maybe a little bit on the tip. And again, these would be the areas that are leaning towards the light source. And the light source is that fire, that fire within that, that staff. And again, if you wanted to utilize your smaller brush, feel free to do so. I'm gonna give a couple pieces of hair in through here. I've got it on her shoulder or her arm or her shoulder, whatever is showing more evident to you. You can totally work it out, putting a little bit in these fringes. Again, I have mostly um, green with a little bit of white, but of course the white will take over. Um, and then I'm gonna bring some down in through her hip area and bring this lighter version down in through here and this is you know think of it as like just flowing fabric so you can have this as um as flowing as you want you can have it as light as you want you can have it as dark as you want i'm going to have the green really represented well in a minute here but just kind of getting these lighter areas on here and then once i feel that i have enough of those lighter areas i'm going to just pick up my green paint and introduce that. I didn't wash my brush, but I'm just introducing some of this green on more on the left-hand side. So that way it again will just tell the viewer that it's being illuminated from the left, putting some in this hair so you can um, understand that the hair is, in, is green too. I am leaving a little bit of uh, darkness underneath that hair. I did it as well on the purple one. That's going to help sell the story of that hair um, being, you know, having its own dimension to it and almost like casting a shadow on the back of the on the back of the witch. So you can really just play with those those shadows and highlights to dictate the form of the object and where it is um, 
popping out and where it's got some wave to it or motion to it so you can have fun with those and then once I've got this one done I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and if you have like I'm noticing this is almost too much the same color as that if it doesn't stand out enough you can just pick up a little bit of black I'm picking up a little bit of black making sure the right side of this witch's body is definitely uh, evident and standing out so I just added a little bit of black in through there I must have lightened it a little bit too much um, and that will be just a trick to allow you to see it in front of the other object so I'm washing and drying my brush I'm going to do this last one here and my colors are going to be orange and white so I'm going to load my brush with orange and just a tiny bit of white on the tip of my brush I'm going to put those highlights in the area that I feel is closest to the, um, the light source and the flame. So orange with a little bit of white. I think I need a little bit more white on my brush right now to make sure that it gets bright enough here. A little bit of white on my brush with that orange, getting these um, the brightest highlights to appear over on this left-hand side. So just kind of using the teeny tiny tip of my brush, especially since this one is smaller than the rest of them. So again, if you wanted to switch to your small brush, you could certainly do that. Um, I need a little bit more white in through here so we can see the difference in through here, putting um, this lightness on the left-hand side. I will definitely put some extra orange on this left-hand side, but this lightness that I'm applying first is gonna help my orange be brighter and have more um, more uh, intensity to it. So if you're finding that you, especially the orange is not uh, vibrant enough for you if you because it's on top of the black, if you go ahead and add a little bit of the lighter shade first, let it dry for a minute and then you can come back with the true orange and put that on top of the lightness and you'll be able to get that orange to speak brighter um, and more true to a color because it would be on top of the light base as opposed to on top of a dark base. Especially with these translucent colors, when you start working them in, it really matters what's underneath them. It matters if it's a light background or a dark background because they're gonna take on that color. They're, they're gonna see what's, it, it, because it's translucent, you'll be able to see what's underneath it. And then I'm just kind of adding as much of this orange as I want to, making it as vibrant as I want to. And then we have one last little step to do. So once you've got all of your witches finished here, you can, uh, we're gonna use our small brush. So you can put this big brush or the medium brush away, take out your small brush and Get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm using black paint. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm gonna go bottom left on this one. I'm gonna go right next to this tree. I'm gonna be doing my initials, but you could certainly use your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very cool Halloween-y witchy kind of image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.